Folks, boys and girls, children of all ages, <clears throat> we have the Rillian Raven, Chapter 9. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Now wait a minute, Rohan said, putting his glass down and facing the drunk ranger directly. She told me the three of you had killed her. That's right, we did. I cut her thrice damn head off myself. Saw it hit the floor and the life go out of his eyes. No chance she could recover somehow? Her damn head was cut off! Clintan slammed his ale into the bar, raising eyebrows in the vicinity. <clears throat> You'd think that would make her dead. But then she shows up again right here just yesterday. Right here. Right where you're sitting. The hairs on Rohan's neck started to rise and he involuntarily rose from his seat, looking around, half expecting to see her standing behind him. Clintan watched him and began laughing with a crazed edge. Ha ha! Not so much fun with a crazy witch on your tail, is it, warrior? Ha ha! Eventually, the maniacal laughter died away, <clears throat> and the old ranger turned back to his drink. Most had spilled, but he emptied the glass, and demanded more. The barkeep looked at him. The barkeep looked him over, then looked at Rohan. Rohan nodded, and the barkeep poured another ale. I was just minding my business, Clintan said, taking a gulp, ale spilling down his chin, flaying low and having a drink, when a wizard with a cloak walked in and sat down beside me. <clears throat> Buy you a drink, friend? I looked up to see a wizard wearing a dark cloak with a hood sitting down beside me. <clears throat> the cloak was up over his head and obscured his features. I was in no mood for wizards at the moment. Piss off, I muttered and went back to my drink. Oh, I think you'll want to have a little word with me, Clintan. At this, the wizard leaned towards me and lifted the hood somewhat. A shimmer appeared where his face was, then resolved into a lovely woman with piercing eyes. I started and tried to pull back, but she reached out her hand like a whip and held me in place with unnatural strength. Just a little word, Clintan, she repeated, over there in that booth. She led me bodily to the booth. I was powerless to resist, both from the shock of seeing her again and the magical strength in her arm. Once we were sitting, I sputtered, You're, you're, you're Marla! I, I saw you die! Actually, you cut my head off, asshole. Something I'm still a little annoyed about. <clears throat> in the quiet booth, she pulled the hood back, and I saw her face clearly. Out of the shadows, I could see that she looked considerably more worn than before, and there was a bright red scar across her entire neck. It was quite disturbing. But, but how? I continued to sputter. Oh, I had a little scheme rigged up for just such an emergency, but I must admit I never thought I'd actually need it. And it cost me, believe me, it cost me. She gripped me with those eyes. Her voice was more gravelly than I'd remembered. That probably happens when your throat gets cut. It took me a long time to get my strength back, she continued and I had to make deals that I'll probably regret, but I'm back, and I want what's mine. I don't have the raven. Clintan, when Lee Van told me the same thing, I admit I got a little angry, acted hastily, and killed him far too quickly, she sighed. But I've calmed down a bit. I will take your life from you one agonizing piece at a time until you tell me where it is. It's probably in the caves. What? I wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible and put it somewhere hard to get to. I gave it to a low-level party going into the caves. 
They very likely died in there. They didn't look too bright. And if they didn't die the first time, they probably did the next. I just wanted it far from me and hard to get. I didn't think it was possible for Marla to stare at me even more intently than she did. At the same time, she took some dust from a little pouch she had, and before I could move back, blew it in my face. Nothing seemed to happen to me, thank goodness, but Marla slumped slightly after a moment. She then put her head in her hands. You fool! I should kill you where you sit just for making this so difficult. She looked up and motioned to a nondescript hobbit standing near the door. He came over smartly and listened attentively. Put the word out discreetly. Look for the raven with a low-level party that has been recently in the caves. Quickly! The hobbit moved off and left the tavern. You knew the moment I came back, didn't you? I asked. More or less. My informants aren't perfect. After all, you did get out of cave town without me knowing. But I knew you would turn up somewhere. So wonderful you decided to come back. I thought it was the last place the cloaked wizard would look. You thought wrong. Funny thing is, I didn't even know you were here initially. I just came looking for Claris at the Mage Guild. He was my only connection to you three. It wasn't much to go on, but I thought I'd start there, and then wonder of wonders, Levan showed up. I thought you wouldn't be far behind. When Claris disappeared, I was certain. What happened to your third, though? Levan killed him back at the inn. Of course. At any rate, I knew you and the Raven were close. My informants were keeping a lookout for you all around. But you had the good graces to show up back here. One bit of luck, at least. So I killed Claris and the thief for nothing. I'm sure it's no great loss. Well, I'd love to stay and talk, but I must be going. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you in here. Flynn wouldn't like it nor some of the higher level patrons, I suspect, but rest assured, once I have my raven, I will be coming for you. Sweet dreams. And I've spent most of my time here ever since, Clintan mumbled as he spilled the rest of his drink on the bar. I guess she doesn't have the raven yet, because I'm still alive. No, she doesn't, came the voice of a man with shockingly white hair. Rohan turned around to regard the stranger who had just walked up. Who are you? he asked. Sorrows! Clintan stammered as he tried to rise off his seat. He promptly fell over, hitting his head on the bar. He sagged to the floor, still breathing, but out cold. Rohan moved his hand to his sword while standing. From all he'd heard, he wouldn't stand much of a chance, but he wasn't going to go out without a fight. Now, now, my boy, none of that, the wizard said, while pushing Clintan aside with his foot to sit in his stool. I don't think I have anything against you. What's your part in all this? He killed my friend, the thief named Shade. Ah, yes, I overheard. Nasty business. So much loss and waste, and none of this had to happen in the first place. Come, have a drink with me. Rohan hesitated, suspecting a trick. <clears throat> He had never been this close to a powerful wizard before, and he distinctly didn't like it. Come now, the wizard repeated. Let us drink to love. Rohan looked at him quizzically, but took his hand from his sword. Have you ever been in love, my boy? The white-haired wizard asked. Sure, a few times. Well, it can make you blind, can't it? I suppose. Would it surprise you to know that it can even blind powerful old wizards? It surprises me to see you walking around. Shade said Marla killed you. Twice, actually. Well, I suppose she just stood by the first time. Of course, I'm pretty hard to truly kill. Smart withers, wizards take steps to protect themselves. It looks like Marla had her own trick up her sleeve, but she didn't quite get, didn't get it quite right, did she? She's not entirely as delightful as she once was. Damned unsightly scar on her neck, eh? I never saw. Oh, that's too bad. But poor Clintan did, didn't he? Rohan slowly sat on his stool regarding sorrows. He knew he shouldn't ask, but he couldn't help himself. It's uh, quite a coincidence you being here, isn't it? 
Not really. I'm a little more in tune with that raven than Marla, so I can tell where it is. If it's not being hidden, that is. I've known it was in Cave Town for some time, but I also suspected Marla was out there watching and waiting. My interest wasn't just in reacquiring the raven, but in finding her again, too. You knew she was here? Not at all. But I did know that the raven quite suddenly disappeared from my view. Naturally, I got myself to Cave Town and started looking around. I found out about poor Clarice and was able to use some magic to see what he saw before he died. And who should I find but my Clintan, my old retainer? So you were looking for him too? No, I was looking for the raven. Once I was here, I realized that the raven hadn't disappeared so much as it was muted, obscured. I ascertained that it must be near powerful magic, and that could only mean the caves. So I watched and waited. And then good old Clintan here shows up back in town. I followed him around just to see what might show up, and lo and behold, a cloaked wizard, Marla. I just had to hear what she had to say to him, and what a fascinating little tale it was. What are you going to do now? Grab the raven? Kill us all? Tut tut, my boy. Manners. Marla was scared of anyone knowing she had the raven. I'm not. And the raven isn't going anywhere. Not yet. Rohan looked again at the white-haired wizard. Other than the hair and the eyes, he seemed like any other young man. There was a confidence, even flair in all he did, though, and the way he carried himself. Rohan believed that had he wanted to, the wizard could kill him with hardly any effort at all. Realizing this, Rohan waved at the barkeep. Splendid, my boy, splendid, Soro said. But let us have wine for this tale. Barkeep, your best red wine, please. Flurian, if you have any. The barkeep returned in a moment with a dusty bottle. He opened the cork and poured two glasses. The deep red looked exactly like blood, Rohan thought, in the low flickering light of the tavern. Now where were we, Soros said, after sipping his wine. Ah, yes, love. Dun, dun, dun.